Mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, those of you who've been to the parsonage where I live, um, who've been to the backyard, know that we have a couple of maple trees. Uh, and that means that this time of year, I've been spending quite a bit of time outside um, with a rake. And unfortunately, not all of the trees um, drop their leaves at the exact same time. Um, I suppose I could have waited for all of them to, to finish dropping their leaves, but I thought I'd get a head start. Um, so this past week, I was out there raking, and um, it was great, enjoyed it. Um, but as I, was, as I was raking, you know, and as I was finishing a, a section of the yard, and you still see leaves dropping, it's... it's uh, I was, I was thinking about just how enormous of a task it can be when you have a lot of trees and the leaves are falling like that. And um, thinking about the sermon I was going to preach, and particularly in the context of mission, I was thinking about um, how mission work can kind of be similar to, to raking leaves in this sense, um, this kind of daunting task that you feel is never finished. Um, no matter what you do, no matter how much... Uh, fruit you see from your mission, it seems like there's always more and more. Um, Think of the disciples. Just before Jesus ascended into heaven, he left them with these words. Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things." We'll talk about an intimidating mission to proclaim the gospel to all nations. And the mission is far from complete. Here, 2,000 years later, there are millions of people in the world who have not heard the name of Jesus, who have never heard a sermon, who do not have the scriptures in their native language. So what am I to do? I am, I'm only one person, you might be thinking. And sadly, this is the point where so many of these mission festival sermons turn into crusades meant to inspire, or worse, guilt you into giving more and more money, into spending more and more of your time, to joining an overseas mission team. Not that there's anything wrong with those things, but what you'll often hear is essentially, you might be only one person, but if we all give more and more money, if we all try harder, we can accomplish the mission. But Jesus has a very different model for mission. True, Romans 10, 14 says, how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? Jesus' intention is to use sinful men and women like you and me to proclaim the gospel. But proclaiming the gospel to all nations is really First and foremost, God's task. It's interesting that in the gospel text we read just a few minutes ago, Luke doesn't record that the disciples immediately went out with great zeal and converted the whole world. No. Instead, the text says, the disciples returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. Jesus gives the disciples the parameters of their mission, proclaim the gospel to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem, but their first response isn't to go, but to wait, because they understood what Jesus was saying. Though they would be witnesses of the gospel, the missionary task would only be accomplished by the Holy Spirit. As Jesus had said to them, Behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. The mission is first, God's. How are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? How are they to hear with someone preaching, without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? Not just sent by a mission society, not even just sent by the church, but sent first and foremost by Christ. He is the one who gives the Holy Spirit to his messengers, and he is the one who adorns their feet to take the message of forgiveness of sins through his death and resurrection 
out to all of the nations. He sends missionaries to preach. And he gives them the message to proclaim. He is the one who bestows the riches of forgiveness, life, and salvation to those who call upon him. Mission is from beginning to end God's work. Saving souls is his mission. What then is our task, you might be asking? Well, first, to pray. Like the disciples, we begin in the temple of God, asking for his blessings on the mission, asking for him to complete his work. Second, to faithfully consider our our role in God's mission. To be sure, Christ is the one who sends out his servants, but he does so through the church through us, through our humble yet faithful gifts to churches, pastors, and missionaries, and through our encouragement of those who are contemplating missionary work. Finally, our task is to ensure that proclamation of the gospel is the center of all mission work. Medical aid, education, building homes, schools, all of these things can and should be done as part of missions. But all must be for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the preaching of the word. God's word is what brings faith to unbelieving hearts. As our Romans text for today said, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Christ's word created faith in us as we heard him speaking to us in our baptism. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And Christ's word creates faith anew in our hearts as we hear him week after week, your sins are forgiven. And the word of Christ spoken through the missionary whom Christ has sent to baptize and to preach and teach will create faith in the hearts of people all around the world from every nation. So let's not become discouraged by the enormity of the task. Instead, let's faithfully pray and consider the humble role that God is calling us to play in the task of mission. Let's, using the analogy of the leaves, rake our small pile of leaves, even though many are still falling from the trees and there are many leaves all over the world to be gathered. Christ still has many other workers in his fields. He will complete the mission. He will not lose a single soul that is his. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Continue with the offertory.